Hey, everybody. Happy Thursday. I almost said Wednesday. I'm behind in my week, but it is Thursday. It's 10 a.m. And you guys are joining me for an author talk short with one of our other 12 day page turner author, James Hill, who is no, he's not new to the author talk realm. He is a publisher of Rock Hill Publishing, has also his own books, dabbles in many genres. So James, tell us about the genres you write in and how you kind of got the bug to become a writer. All right. Well, first I started writing in sci-fi. See, okay. started writing with the uh, Marvel stuff and uh, started, you know, with comics when I was a little kid, you know, reading Marvel comics and decided that, you know, I would start writing out some of these things, trying to find out what the next episode was going to be. And I would write that in and was always wrong. But, you know, that's where that's what got me started writing and and so science and science fiction was a big draw for me. So I started off as a science fiction writer. Okay. And, and somewhere around high school or so, I discovered Stephen King, and he became a very big influence mm-hmm. on me. And I was always wanted to write horror, but Ooh! I'm not really a horror okay. writer. Yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm working on some of that, and then I started writing crime stories, you know, from the idea of the horror comes the, and because of the neighborhoods that I grew up in, uh, mm-hmm. I know you know all about that, but I grew up in the South Bronx and oh my goodness. it was gangland back then, and yeah. back in the sixties and seventies. And this is when street gangs really started taking off in America, uh, okay. really around the sixties or so. That's when street gangs became very big. Uh, and so, mm-hmm. I started writing and thinking crime stories. I also moved from the South Bronx to the North Bronx or Mid Bronx and wound up in a neighborhood full of mafia people. So So you were safe. As long as you were their friend, you were safe. That's how yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Definitely. You make friends with well in the in New York, you make friends with who you can. Right. (laughs) Yeah, I believe that. I believe that was probably the safest neighborhood. You know, it was probably the safest it was. neighborhood to In be. Fact, <laughs> funny thing is, uh, one of my friends who father was pretty high up in the mob, we was not really causing trouble, but people around the neighborhood didn't really like me or my friends. And, you know, the one woman who lived across the street from me, her husband was a cop or an ex-cop because he had died of a heart attack. Oh. And so she had a, a direct line to the local police station. Mm-hmm. And she would call the police on us all the time. We're oh teenagers. She would call the police day in and day out. And one day, my friend, the Gooch, his father comes by. And I'm at his house and everything. And his father comes by. And he gives me the old hand on the shoulder. Mm. Type of thing. You know, okay. put the hand on the shoulder means listen up. He goes, mm-hmm. I know you boys are good boys. I know you boys are just having fun, but you're bringing too many cops in the neighborhood. We don't <laughs> like that. <laughs> okay, all right. At least he was honest with hey, you. You know, okay. Oh, there goes the doggy. There goes the dog. There go be hello, beastie. Well, nice. He had a he had a busy night last night. They were fixing a water main in front of my house. So there's wow. a lot of people outside. He had to guard his territory. I get yeah. it. So you had a long night. <laughs> and, and, and machines and all that kind of stuff. So he's been asleep this entire morning. So he just woke up. Wow. So anyway, grew up in that neighborhood, you know, teenager yeah. and everything. And so I started writing crime stories. And I had this idea for this series of crime stories that was stretched like 20, 30 years. How do you guys go from being teenagers and just getting into the world of crime until they become these uh, international crime figures? And one of the things that uh, sparked this idea was every time on the news when you see one of these guys getting arrested, everybody in the neighborhood would always say, oh, he was such a nice guy. I didn't know he was into that. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's always what happens when you watch crime shows and stuff. And the neighbors are like, he was always such a good boy. I never, I never would have thought, you know, and you're yeah. just like, what? I don't trust people, my neighbors and stuff. I just, <laughs> you know, I'm neighborly. I'm friendly with them, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm very confident. They're all very good people. 
but you just never know of the Jeffrey Dahmers in the world. Okay. Yeah. You don't. You, you don't. don't. And one and one advice was given to me by another mafia guy was, hey, you got to keep a legitimate job. You got to mm -hmm. have something on the books. To, right. To, to show to show the tax people, you know. So you find out this, oh, Mr. Johnson over here or Mr. You know, Rocky over here. Yeah, he, he goes down to the factory every day. You know, he's a factory worker. He's a good guy. And yeah. then you find out later, you know, yeah, he goes down to the factory and he runs the numbers and, you know, uh, bracketeering and all kinds of other things, you know. But yeah, right. he does it out of that office in the factory. Yeah, you got to have your facade, right? You got to have yep. what people see and then what's going on behind the curtain, right? Yep. I love that. So what made you decide to turn, I don't know if those were like experiences. I'm sure some of it is elaborated, so it's not fully the things that you experienced, right? But what made you want to be like, you know what? I want to write these, you know, coincidences, experience, adventures, we'll just say adventures, adventures, <laughs> adventures, adventures that you, yes. you know, <laughs> noticed or were a part of or whatever. What made you decide to turn those into your killer series? Well, because also coming up in the 60s and 70s, it, you know, you had the whole tension between blacks and whites and this and that. And in America, every neighborhood, well, not every neighborhood, but a lot of neighborhoods are really segregated, you know. You have okay. your Italian neighborhood, you have your Irish neighborhood, you have your Spanish, you have your black, you have your this, you know, and you know those neighborhood people flock together. They say birds of a feather flock together. Mm -hmm. Well, people will move into one neighborhood and that where everybody of that nature will move to. And then, you know, when mm -hmm. someone else moves into that neighborhood, all of a sudden you see the neighborhood change, you know, black move into this neighborhood, all of a sudden the white people move out and, you know, more black oh. move in, Spanish people move into this neighborhood, you know, black people move out, more Spanish people move in. So the neighborhoods are constantly changing. You okay. know, they call New York a melting pot, but mm -hmm. everybody melts in their own little section, you know, and the right. idea is you never stir the pot, you know, oh, never stir okay. the pot. Yes. So okay. it gave me the idea. Okay. So what happens if you have the, this one guy in the mob who has friends of different persuasions, you know, he has Irish friends. You know, Italian and Irish doesn't get along. Uh, right. You have Irish friends. You have Spanish friends. You have black friends. And what kind of criminal organization was formed from that? Because it wouldn't be your direct mob family because in order to be in the mafia, you have to be Italian, 100% Italian. Now, you can yeah. be on the fringes of the mob mm -hmm. and work with the mob, but you can't be in the mob. Okay. Right. Yeah. So. The one guy, he can bring in anybody. And then you have the black guy who comes out of a much rougher neighborhood. All right, so this kid grows up in the mob family and in knowing crime and knowing the criminal life, but he's not a street criminal. And then you have another guy who is a hardened street criminal. You know, he comes up in a gang and family life and all this kind of stuff. And what happened when you merge those two personalities together? Yeah. And it creates a super criminal organization. Well, and that's what I, my whole yeah. idea would be. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the whole idea behind the killer series. If these two guys become international criminals, and then you have things with the government and all this kind of stuff that, that feeds into it. Uh, from the 70s on, you have like the war on drugs and what really was the impetus behind that. Yeah, and, you know, international things will happen with with uh, in the Middle East and with the Cold War. And so it's, it's a lot of it's a lot of intrigue. OK, and so it, it's not just a crime story. Right. But that is the center of it. But you have political intrigue. You have all these type of things that actually go on in the world. And a lot yeah. of it behind the scenes because. A lot of people don't hear about this. They don't know this. They don't know what the United States is doing in other countries. They don't know what other countries are doing in the United States. You know, right. look at the world today. Look at what's happening today. How we're so surprised that people are meddling in our elections. And, you know, I used mm -hmm. to watch the show um, Mission Impossible. Yes. 
and Mission mm-hmm. Impossible was around the world meddling in everybody else's government. Right? He does. He's a big instigator. Big yeah. instigator. And 100%. I used to laugh at that because I didn't know for a long time when they kept saying, you know, if you get caught or captured, the secretary would disavow any knowledge of your actions. And I used mm-hmm. to think, no one even knows who this guy is. Why would anybody yeah. care what his secretary thinks? Yeah. And then I found out, oh, he's talking about the secretary of state. Yeah. That's the problem. The, the government can't acknowledge that these guys are going around the world doing these things, you know, these yeah. spies. They're so, expendable, right? They're just yeah. expendable or however you would word that. So did you ever watch that? Uh, it wasn't like a documentary. It kind of was on Netflix about the museum robbery that took place. I can't remember if it was the 80s or the 90s, but they stole these. And I think it was like somewhere in New York, they went into this museum and they stole a bunch of paintings and they can't find them. Right. And so they were traveling like how far it was because it was so long ago. And like the Italian mafia kept coming up, James kept coming into the equation, you know, but it was cool to kind of see, you know, when it got me thinking about that, when you were talking about how, you know, like yeah, they're, you know, international criminals and that's the focus of it, right? But all these other things are going around in the world and that really kind of plays into what their life is, right? They're, I feel like I'm not in the mafia by any means, okay? Don't come for me. But, you know, I feel like if you were a part of a big criminal institute or organization like that, right, you would have to know what's going on in politics, what's going on in other countries, right? Because it all feeds into how you execute and do all the things that you're going to do, right? So you need to be well-versed in all of these things and know what's going on. So pulling in all of those outside things really puts you in the time set, right, of when your book happens, what all is going on in that time period. But all those things play a factor, I feel like, when you're running a a big illegal international organization, you know? I feel like those things are important. Well, back in, what, World War II, who was it? It was one of the big dons that was running uh, the Brooklyn um, um, piers, you know, Mm -hmm. the waterfront down there. So they went to him and they told him, you know, hey, we got a war going on. We need, we don't want any interruptions on them. And he was like, yeah, no problem. Now they were investigating him for all kinds of crimes, but the government came to him and asked him for his help on, you know, Mm -hmm. making sure that product kept moving across with the war effort. And he did. And I can't remember which one it was now, his name escapes me. But anyway, yeah. right after the war, they deported that guy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that deal was off after the war. But, you know, for the next, they were going to deport him anyway before that for yeah. being an organized crime and all this kind of stuff. They were going to deport him back to Sicily or whatever. Yeah. And so he stayed off being deported. Uh, I don't know if it was Luciano or it was one of the big dons in, in New York. And, uh, Right after the war, they went ahead and they turned around. They reopened that case and they deported them. So it was like the Cut government through, does. does Cut you know, yeah, they do get involved with uh, some people of savory character when they need to. Right. Well, so I know you're crazy me, like joining me and my crazy self for the 12 days of page turners. That's how I've labeled it. You know, you're joining this crazy lady for the 12 days of page turners. And you're going to be on December 4th at 7 p.m. Central, 8 Eastern. Um, and what is that? Like 5 Pacific, 6 uh, Mountain? All the time zones. We're just yes, going to go. all the time. We're, we're going to be, we're, the funny thing is, we're going to be on the same time everywhere, but it's yeah. going to be different times. <laughs> exactly. Same time everywhere, but different time depending on where you're at. But without telling us what your promotion, holiday promotion is that you're offering, give us a little bit of a hint of what we can expect your somewhat you know going to be offering for december 4th well i'm going to have all my books of course up right. there my sci-fi my fantasy we didn't get to talk about fantasy but that's okay we, we can talk about that on the fourth yeah. and of course my my killer series all four books from the killer series which i finished this year so i finally penned the last of the killer series even though you keep telling me i should write one more <laughs> I love them. The they are my they are my kind of books and i i love them but you have written in so many genres we didn't even touch on 
we dabbled a little bit in your sci-fi and I have more questions about that. But on the fourth, we're going to dive in so much deeper into all of the books that you have written. Talk about your holiday promotions that you have going on for James Hill. Also, you're going to have some Rock Hill authors that are going to be joining us. They're going to be coming up in some uh, author talk shorts here shortly that will talk about their promotion that Rock Hill is running. So right. besides just James Hill's promotion, he also has Rock Hill Publishing and promotion. Everybody stuff. will be up on a promotion. Everybody, yes. even, the, even the ones who can't make it to the author shorts and stuff like that, mm -hmm. we're still going to be pushing them too because Rock Hill pushes all of our authors. You know? Exactly. That's why I love working with Rock Hill Publishing. They are amazing. And now Mickey Mickelson is also working with you guys, which is so That's exciting. Right. So up into bigger things, right? And so yep. I'm so excited about it. But James Hill, thank you so much for taking time out of your Thursday morning, mid-afternoon well, for you. you. And let yes. me just say congratulations on your award going across the pond and, you know, becoming uh, becoming a big do-to-do over there. Oh, right. I'm really big in the UK, apparently. I'm really, I'm really big over there. So now, I'm now, what was the name of the award again? You, you got it? I run the global award for corporate or yeah, corporate live wire. Yeah, there you go. Wow. Nice trophy, by the way. Nice right, trophy. isn't it? It's so nice. It's yeah. so you pretty. Shout that in, you shout that up on your bookcase behind you. So that <laughs> it always shows up there. You know, it's maybe so a light hot. on it. You put yeah, a little light so over hot. it. You know? <laughs> I'm afraid. Uh, I'm afraid my kids will break it. So it's, still <laughs> it's still over there in the box for sure. But James, so I'm really looking forward to December 4th. I love talking to you. We could talk for hours about all of your books and the experiences that you had that have played a role in your books. So I'm really looking forward to it. So you guys, remember the 12 Days of Page Runner starts December 1st. It goes all the way through the 12th. We're going to have new authors every night, a bunch of different genres every night, talking about what holiday promotion they're offering because the best gift that you can give someone is a book this holiday season. So we have plenty more of Author Talk Shorts coming up, but tune in December 4th to hear more from James Hill. But until then, everybody, bye for now.